All right. Um, hello. Welcome to Talk in Comics. I guess that's the name we're going to go with, where we talk about comics. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Is that the name that you want to go with? I guess I'm just not confident because I don't know if that's the name. Do you like that name? Yeah, I think it's fine. I, I don't think the name matters that much. I mean, it makes sense. It's talking comics. Because we're talking about comics. Welcome to Talking Comics. Wait. <laughs> so that's good then, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good. Okay, all right. So, hey, welcome to Talking Comics, where we talk about comics. This is uh, the first episode, so we don't really know exactly what we're doing here. Uh, my name is Eric. This is Alex. And I'm Alex. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, so kind of the reason why we picked this comic is, uh, I mean, I've never really read a Fantastic Four comic before, have you? No, I haven't. And I never really wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> we figured we would both pick something that, you know, we have little to no experience with, kind of get our first impressions of a team that, you know, no one really cares about. Yeah. And it's supposed to be one of the best runs. So if you're going to try to get into this or to anything, you want to find like one of the definitive things. And this is John Byrne. John Byrne worked on X-Men. He worked on like the really good stretch of X-Men too. He made the Man of Steel comic later. It's like, if you're going to, tr if you're going to try to read something that you really don't want to read, you should do it by someone that you know is good at least. And John Byrne is very yeah. good. And I love his X-Men stuff. So, I mean, how bad could it be? Yeah, that was actually, that's all of the X-Men that I read, by the way, was right after Days of Future Past is when John Byrne left. So it was definitely the iconic period. Yeah. Of that Clarence run. So he was pretty big uh, already when they put him on this. Um, and he wanted to reshape it. Do you think he reshaped it in the first issue? It's hard to tell from what it sounds like. It definitely has a different feel to it. It kind of has that like Saturday morning cartoon feel. Like it's very lighthearted. It's kind of the sense that I'm getting from the first issue. Um, yeah, you know, it's just I think that with this one, he was just kind of getting used to the idea of like him doing Fantastic Four. It's just kind of like a one off with like a silly enemy. It's nothing too serious yet. I think he's just kind of getting used to it. You know what I mean? He gave he gave Sue Storm a haircut. Spoilers, we'll get to that later, but... Yeah, no, I'm excited to see where it goes. I mean, it, the team definitely has... It seems like they have a good dynamic, and, like, I like the dialogue, and it all seems really cool. It just, you know, it was a one-off story. There's only so much to take back from it. <laughs> One thing that I know is that eventually uh, The Thing isn't in it anymore, and he's replaced by She-Hawk. She, yeah, yeah, I do remember That's... that. I've read a couple of those issues, but I don't know a whole lot about it. I've always... I think the thing was always the biggest uh, reason why I never got into Fantastic Four because he's just kind of lame, you know. The clobber in time thing. Like, I mean, the whole team itself is is kind of lame right. if you're if you're honest. Yeah, I mean, especially <laughs> I mean, yeah. Mr. Fantastic just stretches and Invisible Woman goes invisible. There's a guy that's on fire. I mean, it's <laughs> there's not much to it. But even looking deeper than that, though, you know, just the fact that he says the clobber in time thing. And that, that he still does it. You know, that's just his little catchphrase. So dated. Yeah, no, I, I'm impressed, though. Like, it, as corny as it is, he's stuck to it all these years. Yeah. That'd be like if uh, Spider-Man was still saying, like, wallop and web snappers and shit, right? Like, that's, it's like that level, but he's still doing it. But anyway, yeah, let's, let's read it. Again, we can edit this a little bit, make it go a little. Yeah, I, I'm assuming you'll make it so we don't sound like, you know, super cringy, but. There's no no promises there, dude. Uh, <laughs> Fantastic Four 232, the beginning of John Byrne's run. Great cover. Yeah, that is actually a super cool cover with Diablo. I noticed that looking at uh, a lot of the covers in his run, they're super cool covers. I don't know much about the story, but he's killing it on covers. <laughs> yeah, that is true. It's pretty rad. And the splash page here is also super cool. Yeah. It's basically the same cover page, but, you know. 
I don't know if you noticed this or not, but this is just John Byrne's name all mixed up. Oh, is it? I, yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. Yeah. Because he did the inks too, of course. Um, he's just trying to be like witty here. Yeah. So. He's just trying to be, he's like, yeah, I did the words in the pictures and the inks. I, I guess it's just a fun little thing, you know? But yeah, this is a really cool splash page. This is Diablo, by the way. A little cool uh, representation from Spain. I looked, I, l- I looked up some stuff on him. He comes from Spanish nobility, and he's like uh, been around for like a super long time. Doing the Spanish proud. Yeah, he's definitely the Fantastic Four's biggest villain. <laughs> he's got like a toy maker Fuck vibes, dude. doesn't he? Kind of. He's like the Fantastic yeah. Four, my old and much vaunted foes. Like I bet he talks just yeah, like that. Yeah, that's definitely his voice. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so he's talking about wanting to destroy the Fantastic Four. This is you know a little thing he's doing in here. Um, wow, this art is like really fantastic though. Look how cool this guy looks. Yeah, it definitely, the art is definitely what kept me most entertained in this issue. Yeah. You know, that's part of the problem with uh, going live action with some of these outfits is that you could just never make that look no, cool. No, that, that's not going to work. I mean, that's just so fucking stupid in real life, but it's so rad here. Anyway, he's got this. He's, uh, you know, this old lady comes. Great. I think it's like the landlady. Yeah, the landlady is like, oh, it fucking stinks in here. And he's like, oh, and he becomes like this kindly old man. And he's like, yeah, he has to waste one of his uh, potions to be able to tell his landlord off. Yeah. See, what I do like about this starting out. So like Diablo has been like out of Fantastic Four comics for like, it's been like 100 issues. And he's still holding this grudge against the Fantastic Four, even though they basically forgot about it. Yeah, he's yeah. Fan, um, I think I looked it up. He he came around in like Fantastic Four thirty three or something. He's been around for it. Yeah, it was in the thirties. I and mean, he's still yeah, here. Yeah, last he was last seen in issues one ninety three through one ninety four. <laughs> so yeah, he held that grudge strong. Uh huh. I yeah, I don't know. John Byrne was like, okay, I need to bring an enemy for the first issue who should i use and he picked this guy he certainly looks very cool so i can't say i blame him but um anyway he's like go away Uh, everything's fine don't worry and then he's like i'm gonna fucking kill that old lady one day once i get powerful again one thing i like about marvel you know is that the characters even like this guy looks like he has to pay rent you know he's like a super villain that like has to pay rent that's kind of great right like look at this shitty apartment. yeah it's just even they have like normal people problems <laughs> yeah cause... even his costume looks like he, like he probably made that just throwing together some stuff he found at like goodwill or something definitely but he rocks it you know he he's doing his thing but geez he's probably seen better days um Anyway, so he's like, yeah, the old lady will pay and the Fantastic Four will pay for some reason. I really hate the Fantastic Four. Meanwhile, <laughs> we've got uh, Sue Storm here getting a haircut. Yeah, she's just, you know, doing her thing. A normal Monday for her. And honestly, it looks way better than it did. She she rocks the short hair. Man, he draws... Yeah, it's a good change. He draws characters so cool. Look how cool this girl looks. And all these characters. I just like the John Burns art is so fantastic. Yeah. This era of comics is is all of the artists, they do it just like so well. Obviously he's a lot better than a lot of them, but like it just had a cool feel to it. Yeah, definitely. And then out of nowhere you got this earth monster yeah. that pops out of the ground to ruin her hairdressing point. I come for she who is the invisible girl. Woe betide those who stand in my way. Uh that thing is after me, Milo. This may be more than I can handle on my own. Will you call my... Sorry, Susie. You heard what that thing said. You're on your own. So, that's fair, though. I mean... Yeah, I mean, no, she's a superhero. Like, yeah, if, this is more in her ballpark. <laughs> not, not to mention, hey, listen, if you're like a resident of the Marvel Universe and you live in New York, this is just... A Tuesday for you. You see a big monster, you run the fuck away. I mean, everyone knows that. You know what I mean? You don't want to become another statistic, you know, by super I alien. Can't imagine the insurance is like on these buildings. Yeah, no, totally. The insurance is just. I mean, I don't even know how it works. 
Um, I wouldn't even want to associate with superheroes, like cutting their hair, doing any kind of business. Like your shop is going to get wrecked. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah. But yeah, so you see everybody run off and then Sue's like, well, got to change into my clothes. And then apparently recently she just discovered that she could make her uniform invisible under her clothes and yep. then just proof in the costume, which I don't know how it took like 300 something issues almost to figure out that she could do that. Well, you know, hey, I've never had invisible powers. It, it might be a hard thing to learn, but that is, you know, helpful for her that she figured it out. Well, that's interesting. So she can she make other things invisible that she touches or is it just her costume? Yeah, I don't know. I guess that might be something we'll have to learn as we go. But it, from what I've seen, though, this is a lot of first for Sue in this issue. Like, this is the first time she learned how to do that. The first haircut for her. She's and, making a lot of big moves. Yeah. And later she does that crazy uh, force field thing. Don't want to get ahead of myself or anything. but Yeah, yeah. I was going to comment about that, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Hey, dude, look how fucking cool this panel is. Look how rad she looks with her cool new haircut. So this is another, like, panel I love so much. So, like, it has the monster busting through this window. And Sue's like, I need to go invisible. And I need to get to my purse to shoot my Fantastic Four flare gun to get the team's attention. Mr. Fantastic is the smartest man in the world, and the best way he thought to get a hold of the Fantastic Four was a flare gun. <laughs> yeah. They don't have, like, some kind of radio. Right. Like, okay, yeah, granted, um, you know, you might be thinking, hey, this is an old comic. Yeah, they had radio as back then still, believe it or not. they had. And even if they didn't, like, it, shouldn't he be, like, technology-wise ahead of everybody else? They yeah. have a flying car, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they definitely do. But he just thought a flare gun would do the trick. <laughs> you got to cut corners somewhere. He Maybe he wants to be like Batman, you know? Like, when you see that fantastic floor four flare up in the air, you know that shit's about to go down. It strikes so fear also, in all the criminals. <laughs> The team has to just be looking out the window all the time, waiting for that flare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I missed it. Like, what do you mean you missed it? Like, we were all inside. It was like 830. I don't know. We didn't know. It was daylight. <laughs> yeah. Someone call me. I'm, I got a phone. <laughs> um. Anyway, so she's trying to fight him. He's filling with uh, the room with flying clean dirt coating me, and it's hardening like cement. I can't move. All right, we're here with uh, Switch, uh, Ben Grimm here with uh, his blind his girlfriend, girlfriend of Alicia yeah. Masters. Yeah, Alicia Masters, the famed blind sculptress. <laughs> She's leaving like leaving. the worst movie that you can force Ben Grimm to go to. All right, so Ben Grimm is seeing The Elephant Man, which if you don't know is a movie about an, a man who has an affliction that makes his face very big and it gives him... Uh, you know, makes him ugly, and that is what Ben Grimm is going through as well. He is a big rock monster, and it, it upsets him a lot. It's also weird because, like, it's a weird movie to make Ben Grimm go to, and also his girlfriend's blind. Like, how entertaining could the elephant man be for a blind woman? She's like, I loved it. Wasn't that great? I loved hearing that. Maybe, hey, actually, I shouldn't say that because maybe, maybe there are, I don't know, maybe there are blind people who like that kind of thing. And I've never seen The Elephant Man, so I don't know. Maybe that, it's... Uh, just listening to it is pretty it, good. Maybe it's a great soundtrack, you know? <laughs> That's true. I don't know. But also, <laughs> isn't it funny that his girlfriend is a sculptress, meaning that she, like, makes things out of rock, and the thing is a rock? Yeah, there's funny. some layers to this uh, to yeah. this relationship. Yeah. It's also very impressive since she's blind. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, I don't want to be that guy and ask the question that everyone's wondering, but do they fuck? Because they couldn't. He's a rock. Right, he's right. A... she would die. Yeah. Right, so that's... And she clearly has a rock fetish. I mean, she sculpts rocks, she dates rocks. Yeah, there's something going on there. It, it goes beyond, like, it's not like a pity thing. She's into it, so yeah. it, there must be some sort of... We don't need to go into it, but some sort of mutual right, masturbation right. thing going on there. <laughs> I don't want to just, I don't want to come out and say it, but I'm just, it, people probably want to. It needed to be said. <laughs> it really, it needed to be said. Anyway, the thing, oh crumbs, what a lousy time for it to start raining. Raining? What are you talking about? It isn't raining, Ben. Does she not hear the 
the water. I don't know. He's also kind of deaf too. It's it's the whole Helen Keller thing. Yeah, it's a real problem for her. Holy cow, she's right. Wait, how does he talk? He's like, holy cow, she's right. The rest of the street is bone dry. It's only raining on me. If I do that for you, I'm assuming he has a very thick Brooklyn accent. I mean, isn't that like kind of the things? Yeah, that is the things thing is he's very Brooklyn. Bubble of water. I can't do it very well. A bubble of water. It's all moving around me. I'm going to drown over here. So yeah, he's uh, everyone over here who's following along. He's in water. She's screaming for help. Blah blah blah. And then yeah, we see. So his human. plan is to dig underground because water can't go underground. Good thinking, Ben. He's like, there's got to be a way out of here. I'm gonna, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go on the ground. Water hate ground. <laughs> he's not the smartest, you know, but he's trying. And then we get the human torch who gets his own little, his big panel right here with the the big human torch. It feels like they really. Good for him. Plan him up. Yeah, he deserves it. He's he's probably the most interesting character. Um. Well, I don't know yet. I, again, I don't know the Fantastic Four. It's to yeah, I mean, he definitely fantastic. looks the coolest. I mean, he catches on fire. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, so his catch phrase is cooler. Flame. This part's funny because he's like, "Who? I better flame off because I know that her seeing me as a flame man upsets her." And it's like, probably want to pick a different girlfriend than flame man. You know what I mean? Like Human Torch is. This girl doesn't like him when he's on fire. It's like, okay, well. So, and I got some interesting notes about. Uh, about old Frankie here as well. That is pretty ironic for her dating the Human Torch. <laughs> okay, what? So I don't know anything about her. This is the first time. Yeah, I've seen I had the. So like it, it hints the fact that they used to have a relationship. That's like what they're talking about here. Like she's willing to meet up with them so they can talk, and they say that they had a relationship at one point. Apparently, they dated from issues one sixty four to one ninety one of uh, Fantastic Four. And uh, they ended up breaking up because, uh, you know, he kept putting his job in front of her, which how selfish of him saving all of New York City. Yeah. What a jerk. (laughs) One of the other things I found funny was apparently one of the stressors on their relationship was the fact that uh, she has a fear of fire. So, like, it was like difficult for them to have a relationship because she's dating a man who is on fire i didn't know okay well then that makes sense yeah it upsets her yeah, she's so she's afraid of fire i don't even know how this worked to begin with i half expected you to come swooping down blazing like a bonfire it's like yeah that's what i do i guess that she didn't know right or something maybe no because it, it, it says that she like wanted him to give up his position in the fantastic four for her that's just and he obviously like refused to. That sounds so stupid. I mean, I haven't yeah. read, I haven't read that, but that's not, it's like yeah, I haven't either. I want that's you, what the old wiki said. I want you to not be fire anymore, fireman, because I don't like fire. And it's like, baby, please, I gotta be fireman. It's my job, but I don't like fire, so stop it. But also, like, that's just him, though. Like, even if he stops being the superhero, he is still a dude who catches on fire. Right. You probably should just pick someone else. I think you both, it's a little, you know, toxic. Like, you guys should just end that, you know. <laughs> Whew. Just put an end to that, fire boy. No, I may be a little thick headed at times, but even I get the message sooner or later. You don't like fire. <laughs> I'm a little. <laughs> I'm a little surprised you agreed to see me, though. You know, seeing as how I'm <laughs> always on <laughs> right, being that I I go on fire for a living. <laughs> Why not? After all, we came dangerously close to meaning something to each other. Wow. Also, the relationship was like thirty issues. What do you mean came dangerously close? That seems kind of fucked up. I was ready to rewrite my whole life for you. Ready to quit the Fantastic Four. Ready to give up being the Human Torch. Doesn't that tell you how I feel, Johnny? Please, there's more to it than that. So much more. How can I make you understand? You don't know me. You don't know who or what I am. I'm a I'm a girl who really hates fire. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know who or what I am. I hate fire. That's what I am. <laughs> Isn't it enough to know I love you, Frankie? 
Um, anyway. The but of win. course, this nice touching moment gets ruined by, of course, a tornado, because that's that's a normal thing to happen. She's like, Phew. well, at least this tornado isn't on fire. You know, <laughs> at, at least it's a tornado and not fire. Anyway, so he gets attacked by that. Um, and then knocked unconscious. Yeah. And we get this nice view of uh, oh. Mr. Fantastic uh, working in this lab, probably to make a new, better flare gun. Yeah, <laughs> right. He's just like, this flare gun will go twice as high. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but man, this looks so great, though. This whole little thing right here. Yeah, it's definitely a cool panel. Um, and he looks so freaking cool right here, too. It makes me almost like this. Like the Fantastic Yeah, Four. like I want to like the Fantastic Four. I see his cool face here and I'm like, all right, maybe this could be good. Maybe. Um, I felt the same with uh, uh, what's her name Susan too because she also looks cool in this and since they're going to get rid of the thing I'm like alright like maybe there's well, a now shot. we're talking yeah um, this is Reed Richards Mr. Fantastic husband to the invisible girl and the leader of the Fantastic Four what I do love about uh, comic books is the fact that they have to remind you who every character is and like what their position in the team is like literally every single page yeah they assume you have no memory of what's going on right this is Reed Richards he's the main guy he's Mr. Fantastic it's like oh shit okay thank you have the air conditioning units malfunction perhaps I should check a window with my stretchy arm ha <laughs> ha good heavens <laughs> Flame. Johnny, is that you? No, it's me, the living flame. He's the other flame guy. Uh, you know. <laughs> I love when he becomes a ball like this. This is fantastic. Yeah, these are the kind of things that make me not take him so serious. Like, Reed Richards is cool, I guess, like, the smart guy and leader of Fantastic Four, and then he becomes a giant bouncy. Yeah, totally. It, it's just hard to take him serious. And as... Like, his wife, like, Sue, like, how can you take this man serious? She bounces around. She really I would have left him for Namor, too. That's all I'm saying. I, what, does, so does she actually leave him for Namor, though? Or is it, like, something where it's, like, dangerously close but never happens? I know there's some form of relationship between the two of them, but I haven't read any of the stuff, so. Damn, I don't know. That doesn't sound very fantastic to me. Oh, all right, moving on. Oh, and then this, too. Here's another good example. How are you supposed to respect this man? He turned into a giant kite. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like, yeah, all your friends are superheroes and stuff, too. You know, so you, you're friends with all these cool people that have, like, cool superpowers, and then you're married to Mr. Fantastic. Like, you know, Spider-Man, you know Iron Man, Captain America, you know, Thor, and then you're over here married to Mr. Fantastic. He's just really flexible. <laughs> right. I guess the obvious thing people would say is that he could do crazy things with his dick. But right. but it's like at the end of the day that doesn't matter when you're this embarrassing. You know what I mean? You don't want to be with the guy even if he does have a crazy dong. You know what I mean? It's like let's look at him. You're gonna be having sex with him and you're gonna think of this. You're gonna think that earlier that day you saw him floating through the He was road. a bouncy ball. He was a bouncy ball, right? He was this. And now he's you know I don't know. She must she just wow. But anyway, to the park, he sees the girl and he's like, oh yeah, it's the girl Johnny was meeting or whatever. <laughs> and he literally says, it's the girl Johnny said he was meeting, Frankie something. Like he literally... Well, did you and say again, that? like, what a good friend because she was apparently in a relationship with him for like 30 issues and he didn't even care to remember her name. Right, he's like, yeah, Frankie <laughs> something? I don't know. That doesn't have anything to do with science. I could care less, honestly. <laughs> Uh, Frankie, where's Johnny? He's over there behind those rocks. It's a wind thing. It's killing him. And then he goes over there and then he has this crazy idea to like uh, go against this. And he's like, oh, no, we're not supposed to switch enemies. And wow. Do you have anything to say about any of this besides that it looks awesome? Not really. I mean, just the obvious. He has this great idea that obviously these enemies were selected for each other. So the stellar idea would be to, you know, switch to have a better advantage. So I don't think it really needed Mr. Fantastic to get the idea that maybe this uh, 
these team ups weren't such a great idea. Yeah, he's just that smart. He's like, I should put the fire guy against the fire guy. He'll do a better job than I would. And I can beat the wind guy. Or no, he takes the wind I, guy. What? I love how uh, Mr. Fantastic constantly has to remind his team like what their power is and like how they should use it. <laughs> like that has to be annoying. <laughs> yeah, right. He's a he's a classic mansplainer, is what Mr. Fantastic is. He's just a real smart guy, and he feels like he's constantly having to explain everything to everyone. It's like, do we get it? Okay. This is issue. Two. I mean, before he got there, I mean, the Human Torch was literally laying unconscious on a rock. So, I mean, he might be onto something. Actually, that is a good point. It's like, yeah, the, the reason they're not dead is just because of this guy and his brain. I mean, the thing would have been dead years ago. Anyway, um, so yeah, he's like, we should uh, f- fight each other's enemies. He takes the, yeah, the old true. Yeah, he takes this to his wife, and he's like, "Who's doing the uh, force field thing?" By the way. And yeah, that's and also a really cool looking panel going like Super Saiyan right there. Yeah, that but, is uh, super badass, and he's looking cool in the background too. But yeah, and then this is where we get to uh, yeah another new ability that Sue Sue decides that she just has in this issue. Yeah, by she can travel using her uh, what is that like a force field? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's like a force field bubble that she's generating that propels her back. So it, like boop, and then it kind of like pushes her back when she throws it out. So that's interesting, and that is like again a new thing. Here she is. I, I still don't understand how it works, though. Uh, so it's, you know, it's like a big force field thing, and it, like, comes out of her hand with force. So, like, that force shoots her back. I guess. Yeah, it just seems like it's using a lot of power. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to... It's a comic book. I'm going to go with it. Yeah, I mean, and she was just doing, like, a a force field thing, so she can make it go around her, or she can, like, shoot it out. I guess. But if you go to the bottom panel, she's like sitting on her force field like a chair. And she's just riding throughout town on this invisible chair. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I for- oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Okay. Never mind. Take back what I just said. Um, but anyway, so yeah, she, this is how she travels now. I guess it just looks like she's flying to everyone, right? Because they can't see that. Yeah, it probably looks that's ridiculous to them yeah it just looks like another flying superhero no big deal um okay and then we come back to ben Grimm, which makes me wonder how long has he been suffocating i know does he just have like he can really hold his breath for like a super long time like i've had it no more breath in my air uh in my lungs it's like yeah it's been fucking 15 minutes (laughs) and like how are you not dead then he, he stumbles into this uh, sporting goods store, unable to... The sp- one shop in town that happens to be one block away that happens to sell oxygen tanks. Yeah. So, lucky for him. And, and the girl just happens to be buying one also when he comes in. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's like on the counter and everything. She's just like, one oxygen tank, please. Oh, gosh. What's going on? <laughs> I was just. And I like the shopkeeper. Uh, he's like, "Oh no, what can we do? Like, really? You can't put two and two together together here." He's <laughs> like, "Oh." Um. So yeah, gives them the oxygen. The water monster is like, "Oh yeah, well then I'll just drown the girl instead." So here she is drowning. Very cool art again. I mean, if you wanted a picture of a girl drowning, that's a pretty cool one, right? Um, yeah. If you're into that. No. If you're into I yeah. Oh. But yeah, then Ben's like, you got another air tank? And the guy's like, no, nah, that's my only one. Which yeah. I don't know how that have to be his only one. But why does he need to? These things have been going like hotcakes. I had 20 last week. I've just been selling my air tanks nonstop. And this, yeah, this just happened to be the last one. He wants two, so then... Or ideally, actually, he would want three so they could all wear air tanks and then he would, none of them would get drowned. You know what I mean? And that water monster would just feel like a fucking idiot. Yeah, he'd just go down the street and drown someone else. And then they would just have to keep giving everyone in town air tanks until the water monster, yeah, couldn't do anything. 
But also just think, like, if it wasn't for this guy selling an oxygen tank on this day, this would have been how Ben Grimm died. Yeah, that is true. That really would have been anticlimactic for sure. The well, life of superheroes just is one lucky situation after another. You know, something something that I think is worth mentioning, too, while we go through all of these is I notice how, you know, they're speaking. They, they certainly seem to be like sentient beings maybe chew on that yeah maybe chew on that a little bit as like we get to the end here yeah because i'm sure we'll come across that again at some point yeah maybe someone will make some mention of that yeah that's like my favorite part in this whole issue i was dying at that part anyway okay moving on so she saves him and puts all the water in this ball and then the thing goes, it's clobbering time, and he clobbers the earth monster. Right. Because we couldn't go an issue without hearing it's clobbering time. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know. I just thought, I guess you just, you do it so long, you can't end it at a certain point. Because there's going to be a lot of people out there like, man, Fantastic Four just wasn't the same after they let go of it's clobbering time. You know? Anyway. It's just cheesy. Other superheroes have, like, a really cool one. The Human Torch one, I feel like that's really cool. Flame on. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes more sense because he's, you know, it's like he's flaming on. That's a quick one, you know. To me, my X-Men, like, that's kind of a cool one, you know. Like, Avengers Assemble, you know. That's pretty cool. But it's clobbering. You got uh, Colossus and Wolverine fastball special. It's oh. always a personal favorite. But... Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, anyway, so yeah, he clobbers, he do, he do, and then, uh, all of the little rocks come together into a big fist and punch him, and he's like, ha, ah, you know, what? And then he gets clobbered back. He gets, I feel like you should know, like, in a comic book, any monster that's made out of, like, earth, and you, like, break it up or whatever, it's gonna reform. That's, like, what they do. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. That's, what were you thinking? Uh, not far away, other eyes uh, witness the confrontation. There's Ben, but it's the rock creature he's fighting. That should have gone after Sue. Guess I, c- I could have guessed wrong. Is it possible that... No, there's Sue in the sporting goods store, and the floor behind her looks wet. My assumptions was correct. Sue must have lured the rock creature here so Ben could take care of it. It's like, ah, good job, Sue. Um, so yeah, he gets the generator, and he wants the water monster to fly into it. And also, like, going back here, so, like, currently he's being, like, I don't know, bombarded by this wind monster. What is the wind monster trying to do to him right now? Oh, that's a very good point. Yeah, the wind monster is just kind of flying around him, but since he's in stretchy noodle mode, it, it can't do anything, and that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It seems stretchy <laughs> noodle mode or not, it'd be able to... So he's just, like, gone through the whole city with this thing just, like, tangling up around him. Yeah, it's like he's... Do you see how he's noodling through the strains of air? So he is just constantly noodling around everything that whole time reading that i was just like trying to figure out what the objective of that uh the wind monster was here because he's clearly doing nothing to him yeah i don't know i guess yeah to be on his tail that is the real objective you know what i mean of the writers at least anyway so yeah they're fighting some more um and then we then we cut to the like I'm sure it happens a lot in Fantastic Four comics where like Mr. Fantastic comes in and he like sciences this whole uh, this problem out and gives each one of the team members like their own little role in this crazy science experiment that he has planned to take out the enemy. Right. Read, Sue, don't ask any questions. Just do as I say. Right. I'm sure he says that a lot. Like now everyone shut the fuck up. I've got to fix this. And if you don't listen to what I say, you're going to die. Do you understand me? And they're like, yeah, please, just tell us what to do, Reed. Uh, Are you holding the water elemental? Quickly, throw a force field around the middle part of my body, then get ready to release the water entity. Release, I don't understand, but whatever you say, my darling, right? I like to think if the the team was called the Fantastic Three and Reed wasn't there, they would have made it three issues, tops. Yeah, they'd be be dead, right? (laughs) Excellent. You snared the air elemental that was attacking me. Now hold it fast while I extricate myself from your force field. So here's him extricating himself from a force field. Going laffy taffy mode. Uh, 
Now release the other. Instantly, Sue obeys. Reed Richards, my master does not wish me to battle you. So he like... Why would you tell him that? You're, you're basically saying like, I am incapable of taking you on. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. This is not what was supposed to happen. I have come to fight, creature. I've come to put an end to this conflict. Uh, and then he moves at him with the car batteries. Let me get some. Those are some long jumper cables, by the way. Yeah, jumper cables. That was the word I was looking for. Yeah. They reach, like, from the the outside by the street, clear into this building, and they reach to this this water monster. Oh, yeah. he had... It seems like a safety hazard. No. Yeah, it's me. I, well, maybe he had a pair of extra long jumper cables just for this very reason. You know what I mean? There's probably another water monster he fought in the past, and he's like, ah, got to keep... Well, he is the world's smartest man. Yeah, that's that's true. He every variable is planned for, right? Anyway, he puts an end to the conflict. Gone without a trace. My hypothesis was correct. Ben, Ben, can you hear me? The key is transmutation. We have to force them to change their state of matter. I hear you, big brain, and it's music to my shell-like ears. Now, okay. So. Yeah, so then you'd see him turn him into a mud monster, basically, and that's that's his demise. But he turns him into a mud monster. Okay. It doesn't really change his state, technically. I mean, he's still a solid, I feel like. Okay, sorry. I Yeah, God, hopefully I'll, I'll get better at this as we do more of them. I'll get more. But anyway, um, this is what I was talking about right here. Uh, holy spit, it's disappearing. You didn't tell me I was going to kill the critter. So, you know, they're superheroes. He doesn't want to kill them, right? Like, that's not what they do. But he's like, you didn't, Ben. Very dismissive. You didn't, Ben. Now, Sue, we have to change the state of your captive air <laughs> elemental. He just totally just, we didn't, Ben. Like, okay, shut the fuck up. But how? Well, but how? What can I do to change the state of air? Air is a gas, Sue. I like how he adds the Sue there. That's very cutting. Condescending air, of it. Yeah, air is a gas, <laughs> Sue. And like any gas, it will react to pressure. Uh, this is I mean, a- it would be annoying being like the world's smartest scientist and then like your wife doesn't understand like third grade science. Yeah. Like that, that has to be frustrating. Right. He, well, that's on him. He should have found someone else. But now they're a superhero team and it's really hard to break it off, you know. Um, this is a little. <laughs> so that, Here he goes again. This is a little bit like murder, ain't it, Stretch? <laughs> And, and yeah, it is It is a lot a bit like murder. But he's like, no, Ben, not at all. Now, pe- please be quiet. He's like, no. <laughs> no, Ben. Ben, will you shut up? Ben, shut the fuck up. Sue, we'll need maximum concentration to achieve her goal. You understand, Sue. You have to shrink the force field. So she's like, I understand, but I'm not sure I'll be able to do that. It'll take tremendous strain. And basically, he's just like, yeah, we'll do it anyway. And then she focuses... And she focuses even harder, and then bloop. Um, and then and then murdered again. Yeah, yeah, seriously, just absolutely murdered. That thing was, like, afraid of dying. I mean, it was like, oh, no, my master told me not to fight you. Like, it was dead. And that was a horrible way to go out. She crushed him alive. Yeah, she turned his state of matter into another matter, transmutated him into ceasing to exist. We come down here and they're talking about it. And he's like, I don't know. It still seems an awful lot like cold blooded way of getting rid of bad guys. Ain't it against our image? And he was like, it was no more cold blooded than any scientific procedure. Ben, you must not realize that or you must realize these were not living creatures. So they were literally talking to us. (laughs) Yeah, it's like it was it was just a scientific procedure all i did was uh give the guy a lobotomy you know what i mean it's just a little <laughs> scientific procedure i just i they're cut elemental them. monsters they're not real people like criminals yeah it's fine <laughs> oh yeah and just how do you figure that out sherlock i'll, I'll explain later ben it's just like i don't know i'm pretty sure we murdered these things he's like we didn't okay hey um which one of us is the super genius is it me or you we didn't okay why don't you just i i really hope that like after this issue like ben develops like a drinking problem to deal with the fact that he just murdered for the first time <laughs> and no one even cares see now that that is why that's how he dies he, he kills himself drinking he does he not he drinks himself to death right his liver is not made out of stone so that that's a real problem for him and yeah he dies of alcohol poisoning because he can't deal 
with he can't cope with the fact that he murdered somebody and his team is just making him sound like he's the crazy one yeah why don't you yeah because sue storms over here like it's okay we listen to whatever reed tells us and johnny she doesn't care and then like johnny doesn't even hesitate yeah johnny's like whatever you say reed (laughs) you're the best man you're so smart (laughs) dude you're like crazy smart dude that's the vibe that i get from him Anyway, transmutation cannot be used against that entity. The torch is on his own. So they, they flame each other. These panels look pretty cool. They're all fired out. Yeah, but, I mean, why are fire monsters like, well, fire people shooting fire at each other? It just doesn't seem, it seems like a bad idea. Yeah, the, the one guy gets hotter than him. So then he has better fire. He, well, he goes Nova, and then he, like, eliminates all the oxygen, which I feel like could have ramifications for the city under it. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I don't know much true. about, like, having a sun, like, in your atmosphere, but it, it seems like it would be a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, he luckily, he lands right here, and this boat here catch him up. Holy cow, the wife will never believe this. Uh, 20 minutes later in the residential level of Fantastic Four's headquarters. That was the torch. He's all right, Sue. A tug just fished him out of the East River. I don't know. He's smoking a cigar. And then we're back to Ben talking about, like, seriously, I think we murdered someone. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. No, but yeah, that's the thing is he, yeah, he never mentions it again. He's like, oh, whatever. And then Reed's like, Ben, I'm on the phone. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. He's <laughs> just like, Ben, uh, I am talking here, please. Um, I mean, that's that's pretty much it to say about that. They're yeah. Basically, he's getting called by the Human Torch saying, hey, I'm on a boat. Yeah. I'm coming back. I killed my monster, too. The art looks real freaking cool still. Like this panel right here, he's looking like real rad. <laughs> I mean, Ben has already started smoking because of the issue. <laughs> yeah, right. He's just like... <laughs> That is a blunt, too. That is not like a normal yeah. cigar. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's drowned. He's in. coping. Yeah, he's Hard. coping. He's self-medicating, as they say. <laughs> Speaking of which, you owe us a bunch of explanations, Stretcho. So, yeah, he wants to know about the death, right? And he's like, I know, Ben. From the actions and speech of the entities, I deduce they were primal ele- uh, elementals. And aside from Dr. Doom, who would never resort to such crude methods. Okay. I feel like he probably would, but I don't know. Much There's a lot there. of assumptions going on here. <laughs> yeah. We, we have only one foe who would use alchemy against us. Alchemy? You mean Diablo? You slipped a cog, real? He's dead. I saw him die in a solar furnace. You saw no body, Ben. That's a good point. If you don't see the body, that's kind of like comic book. It's really sad when, like, Ben is, like, making better points than you. The man is a rock. (laughs) Yeah, he's a rock. Yeah, he's really just kind of avoiding... He's like, oh, you know, it was like magic from Diablo, so it's like fine that we killed them, but he's avoiding like the question of whether or not they were like actually like sentient beings or not. But I guess let's just ignore that. But Reed, if it is Diablo, how can we find him? He can be anywhere in the city, even anywhere in the world. And he's like, hey, I don't know much about magic, but I know who does. And then look at this guy walking through the streets looking like this like a, the most criminal criminal i've ever seen yeah right he's like uh he's like the bad guy that you would see in like a mcgruff the drug dog cartoon you know like <laughs> this is a guy who like opens up his trench coat and he's got like a bunch of heroin bags like uh, all lined up um anyway he's he's upset that he doesn't have the elementals and he's like okay i gotta get out of here mr fantastic intervenes and he's like Oh, golly, how did you find me? And uh, he found him because of uh, Dr. Strange over here. Well, so he says he found him because uh, they had reports that, like, four elemental uh, totems or whatever were stolen from, like, a, a museum. Oh, yeah. But, like, why did he Why did he need Strange for that? He's not a detective. Is it just, like, anything involving magic? Like, gotta call Strange. That is interesting. And why did Strange have to show up? Like, yeah, he like he does nothing here. Yeah, he's he's just, literally. It, it was more of just like so people remember, like, hey, remember Doctor Strange is a thing, right? All he really, all of this 
should have been was like a phone call. Like he calls up Doctor Strange and he's like, hey, have you heard about this? And he's like, oh, yeah, that kind of reminds me of that stuff that was uh, stolen from the museum a while ago. I bet it's connected. And then he's like, oh, great. OK, we can probably find him through that. But he doesn't need to show up there. Um, well, kind of. I have a theory about that. If you scroll down a little bit. Uh, so he invites Doctor Strange to like come and help him with this case. But it says like uh, the, at the very bottom of there it says continue oh. with Doctor Strange's adventure in the next sixty days. So like at this time, Doctor Strange was doing so bad in comics that his comics were coming out, you know, every every other month at this point. So they had to just like squeeze him into other people's titles so he at least stayed relevant in some kind of form. Oh, I see. I see. They were just trying to. They were trying to give him a little push, you know, make people remember that Dr. Keeps Strange him was a thing. A, also a free ad for, you know, his next comic. That is definitely what it is. 100%. My pleasure, Professor Richards. I am ever prepared to aid the Fantastic Four. <laughs> and they're like, all right, we'll see you later. Yeah, and he's like, can I get a ride at least? No? Okay. I will ride the bus. <laughs> golly i can't wait to read the next doctor strange anyway so yeah that's that um okay so what did you what did you think about that you know it was uh it was all right it was a nice clean story it had a nice start to it nice finish it it definitely um it would be interesting to see when we see an actual story arc and see where he's like planning to go with the Fantastic Four because right now it's kind of hard to see how this is the most iconic Fantastic Four run of all time. Yeah, definitely. or one of them. Definitely. So I'll be curious to see when he starts developing the story and getting some like I don't know momentum on the story. Yeah, I wonder how many more issues will be like this. My guess is that there might be like one or two more. That's just kind of like a. One-off is not the word I'm looking for because it's not technically a one-off, but it's like a self-contained villain sort of thing. Yeah, it's a self-contained story. I mean, it story, it starts yeah. and finishes in the same right in the same. Area. So hopefully, I mean, I imagine there will be a couple of those before it gets into anything real. Yeah, um, those are cool though. If I think of this as like if there was like a Fantastic Four animated series and this was an episode of it and if it was done pretty well, that would be like a pretty fun one, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of... Yeah, I mean, I'm not against stories that, you know, begin and conclude all in the same issue. I mean, if they're done well, it, it's fine. It's just, it's not noteworthy in any form. Like, no one's going to be like, that's my favorite Fantastic Four story. That's true. Who knows? <laughs> it's that. time that Ben Grimm was forced to murder someone. Yeah. And then he just forgets about it. And he's like, oh, it was just science. Okay. Yeah, shut the fuck up, Ben. He really, over and over again, that was my favorite part because he keeps mentioning it. He's like, I don't know. This sure seems like murder to me. And he's like, no, it's not. Very dismissive. It was like four or five pages that he brings it up. And every single time it was dismissed. Yeah, just like. And not a single other team member seemed like slightly interested in, uh, you know, talking about it. Yeah, they don't they don't question him. They just go with it, which is, you know, again, that might have been why they're alive. I would I would imagine. Um, yeah, it's worked out. Do you know anything about like anything about Fantastic Four? Because I don't even know like how they're friends with. Was he friends with Doctor Doom before they went to space or something? Uh, and that's what I know from that Fantastic Four movie I saw. Right. But, uh, that's all you know, I know, too. Yeah. My no, I have is. no knowledge of any history of the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Again, so it'll be interesting to see when, because I'm sure Doom is going to make an appearance at some point. Like, there's no way they're going to do a Fantastic Four or without him. I was and just... I think. If I remember right, I think Galactus is going to make an appearance at some point as well, which will be cool because I've never read like a story that, you know, is about Galactus. I've seen him like appear and stuff, but it's never been like centered around him. Yeah, I bet that'll be great. I'm I'm excited for all of that. I'm excited to see again, like the Fantastic Four give me its best shot because 
If this is it, I mean, if I read this and I'm like, oh, I'm not really into it, I guess that just kind of means I'm not in the Fantastic Four. But I like it. It was so good. Far. I don't have to try again. Yeah, right. I mean, but yeah, it's 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 pretty good so far, and I could see it getting better. So, what what we should also do? Um, we talked about this before, but we should also talk about X Men. For those out there listening, we're going to talk about the mutant massacre, and we know a lot more about X Men, and I feel like maybe that'll be that'll it, go. It definitely seems a little more exciting and you got longer story arcs there's more to talk about i feel like um yeah i'm definitely looking forward to talking about x yeah that's gonna be fucking great dude i'm been reading that but yeah i actually have to get ready to get off here but um oh yeah well hey it was good talking to you um we'll do this again i'm gonna read more x-men and i think that for fantastic four maybe we can read like the next four issues or something. So yeah, yeah, we can give it a couple more tries and see. Like, it, it, if it just absolutely doesn't go anywhere, we can we can jump in somewhere on X Men. Okay, sounds good. That that'll probably be the better idea anyway. I'm gonna keep reading X Men just in case. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, let me know when you get done editing this video. I'd be curious to see what you got. Okay. Sure. Sounds right. good. Talk good, to you. Good talking to you later, man.